One of the things we can do to control the uh, amount of intensity to our color is to control the diffuse intensity as well as the ambient intensity. One of the things you'll notice is a correlation between diffuse intensity and the amount of scattering in your scene. So if I lower the diffuse intensity, we get very little influence from the light. In fact, if I was to take the light's intensity up, you'll see that it actually has no impact at all on the point cloud. So there's a link between color intensity on scattering and the, or sorry, the diffuse intensity on scattering and the light's intensity. So you'll notice if I increase the diffuse intensity, let's say even to 0.5, the intensity of a light will have a definite impact uh, on the colors in the point cloud. So I'm actually going to increase the intensity of the color on the diffuse intensity. I'm going to lower the ambience intensity to try and get a little more color or shading around the edges. Again, the ambience is just adding to the overall intensity of the diffuse, and I can maybe even lower the diffuse a little bit. I would also like to try and get an overall intensity, a maximum intensity I might need for this effect. So if I set my intensity to 1, or even to, let's say even to 3, I would think that you'd want a fairly bright muzzle flash, uh, and that would illuminate the character as well. So I'm going to settle on, I'll just go with 1 for now. 1 should work. The alternative is 0, and I think that's a reasonable amount of light that would be added to the character. So we'll go with that, and I'll begin to build for that intensity. So I can actually lower the overall density on the density tab, so the effect isn't quite as bright. And we're actually going to lose a little bit of our, uh, I'll lose a little bit of density as well, which is kind of nice. So the effect is still bright, but we don't get all of that extra towards the edges. Now finally, when it comes to the contrast uh, amount, if we increase the contrast amount, we get a much brighter particle stream. If we lower the contrast amount, we'll tend to get a smaller particle stream that's a little more focused. And as I reduce the contrast amount, we can actually see uh, more color variation along our gradient. Once I've got my density working, I can probably lower my density even more. A value of 1, we actually get nothing, or very little. So it's just a very scene-by-scene uh, -scene specific value you want to set. So I'm going to keep working with my density. I think I'll go with a density of about 8. Next, what I'm going to do is start to create some shapes in this uh, within this cloud. If I look over on the Particle Density tab, I can control the falloff bias. Now, I'm actually going to get a little closer here. So we can get a, a better look at what's going on. So I've got my effect. As soon as I lower the falloff bias, you'll see it has an effect uh, much like the contrast amount does. Except this is a more globalized control. So this would act as a multiplier for the falloff on the shape. So if I lower the fall off a little bit, I'm going to want to balance this value out against the shape attribute. If I'm using a shape, I can actually uh, create long, thin runs of particles where I've got a lot of overlapping particles. And I can elongate them, uh, a shape, along a particular direction. I can do a velocity-based scale, and I can also align on velocity as well, much like a lot of the tools we use in the, uh, in the ice tree. At the moment, when I align on velocity or I use velocity-based scale, nothing really happens. I'm actually just going to use the align on velocity uh, option for now in the shape and rotation tab. And as soon as I elongate the particles, you'll notice we get a little bit of breakup. So as you increase the elliptical shape, you lose a lot of density, but you can compensate by increasing the falloff bias. So you can see I'm starting to get some long uh, streaks of particles. 
So I'm getting something like that now. And if I was to use velocity-based scale, elongate it a little bit more, and increase the bias. And once I've kind of maxed out on my falloff bias, if I really want that long, thin scale, I can then begin to increase the contrast amount, which will illuminate the particles substantially, at which point I can begin to increase the elliptical values. Again, at a certain point, you're going to lose your shape entirely, so you really have to sort of strike a balance. So if I lower my falloff bias, I'm going to go with a bit of a fatter cloud. And I'm going to lower my contrast amount. an increased falloff bias here and an increased global density. I'll use something like that as my muzzle flash shape. Now I'm likely going to go back in here and work the gradient values a little more. I'm not really crazy about this pink so I'm going to go in and try and swap that out for something a little, a little hotter. changes the overall look a little too much. So I'll see if I can add a little bit of yellow into it. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Maybe I'll take the overall global density down a little more. One of the last things we can do is clean up a little bit of the grain that you see in the particles. Uh, I've actually got the aliasing at about a mid-range right now, but in the lookup table, if I lower the cell size, I can probably clean up some of the artifacts. You can see how we smooth them out by lowering the cell size, so I get a much smoother uh, volumetric shape. Of course, you can also use some of the interpolation options to do some further refining, although you'll find your largest impact is to reduce cell size. But again, be careful because it can really slow down your computer. Uh, one of the other things we can do is, when it comes to details, we have our marching settings set to uh, low detail. Marching has a very uh, high impact on render time when you change the detail levels, but adjusting the marching settings can often add a last level of smoothing to your particles that uh, makes doing a lot of solids or like fluids uh, very nice. You can see in this case I completely remove all of those artifacts. Uh, I would actually go with the marching settings in high detail before I would uh, lower the cell size. So if I can actually go back to a, a cell size of 0.75, I'll increase or decrease my render time. So in this case, I'm willing to make that compromise. Okay, so we've got our muzzle flash effect finished.